give you a thought that's on my heart uh, from the book of Romans, chapter number 16, 13. Um, I didn't get the full report of what just happened this morning down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where at least, I think, seven more policemen have been shot, or maybe ten, uh, something like that, three dead, three or four dead, one in the hospital almost dying, or close to those numbers. Just this morning. Tomorrow will be the Republican big convention up in Cleveland, Ohio, and they are saying there's so many threats being made, it's going to look like some kind of war zone if, if they're not careful. At the same time this week, we saw that man, you saw it on the news, in uh, uh, France, I believe it was in France, took that truck, I mean a truck, and just literally just rolled it over people for a solid mile. A solid mile before, I mean, I know he's saying, how come they couldn't stop that? I mean, a mile, but I guess, I guess it was just so unexpected, he just kept just rolling over people. And people, he showed them, laying there on the ground and uh, jerking and bleeding and dying. And we are living in some bad, bad times, folks. Terrible times. And then this week, we saw uh, the Turkey military take over the government, and they declared martial law uh, Friday night or Saturday night, and then they backed off and said, no, the government still got control. That's the first time I ever remember in my life, or the second time, actually somebody declaring martial law. I don't know if you know this or not, but when martial law is declared in a country, the president remains the president. And uh, if there's a tragedy like that happens in our country, if it ever comes to that, and it very well might, if the Lord don't come, the president don't go nowhere, election or no election. There's so much stuff going on in this country tonight, we can't even talk about. The drugs, uh, the problem with that Flocka drug that I showed you on the video last Sunday morning, and then this K2, it's, it's just unbelievable, unbelievable. People have superhuman strength when that flock of drug enters their body. It takes six men to hold one man down. And so, that being said, I want to look here in Romans 13 and show you where you and I are. Before I read it, I was going to play you that CD tonight. It, it won't work on that CD player, but I'll get it next Sunday, Lord willing, and you'll hear it, that they have passed a law now in the state of Oregon that your 15-year-old child you're 15 year old, impressionable, young, can't get a tattoo, can't get without permission, can't get driver's license, but can say, I feel like a girl, and can get a sex change operation, and the government pays for it without the permission of parents. That's hard to believe. That's absolutely hard to believe. And kids are having this stuff pushed on them. And I'm telling you, the time's coming in the next few years if you've got kids in a public school, you're going to have to be making some hard choices because it's getting to where now you say, oh, well, I went and I'll send them and just teach them right from wrong. It's getting to the point where uh, if your kid even stands for what's right, they're going to be looked at as some kind of weirdo and uh, even a transgressor before it's over with. So tonight, Romans 13, look at verse number 11. Romans 13, 11. And that, knowing the time. See, if you're smart... You know the time that we're living in. You understand the times. That now, it is high time to awake out of sleep. An old southern expression. It's high time to do this, high time to do that. That's where it comes from. And wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness... Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. I want to preach tonight just for a minute on the subject, it's time to wake up. Wake up, Christians. The Bible compares the time you and I live in, to night time. It is a time 
When the sun is gone, the moon is out. It's dark. The sun in the Bible is a picture of Jesus Christ. The moon in the Bible is a picture of the church. The moon comes out at night time, the time you're living in right now. The moon has no light of its own. All the light of the moon reflects off of the sun. So when the sun shines on the moon, we see it. That's a church shining on the dark world. When the world comes between the sun and the moon, what do you call that? An eclipse. So it blocks out the light of the moon. That's why the church, when the world comes between Jesus and the church, the light of the church is blocked out. And we're living in the time called night time. It's dark. And you get very, very sleepy. Now let me get, explain this to you just by way of introduction. This message is going to have a, a lengthy introdu introduction and a short sermon. So listen carefully. Psalm 19, the Bible compares the sun to the Lord Jesus Christ. The moon in Song of Solomon 6.10 uh, to us, the church. The stars to soul winners. Also in the Bible, there are four watches in the Bible. There are four watches. These are found in Mark chapter 13 and verse 35. They are called evening, midnight, cock crowing, and morning. The Jewish eat night started at 6 o'clock, or the day, uh, the night started at the evening. Remember in the Bible we said the, the evening and the morning were the first day? It starts out with the evening and ends with the morning. Those 12 hours are divided into four watches. Evening, midnight, cock crowing, and morning. Now from 6 to 9, 6 o'clock in the evening to 9 at night, it would be called evening. From 9 o'clock in the morning to in the evening to midnight, it's midnight. And from 12 to 3, it's called the cock crow. And the rooster crows at 3 o'clock in the morning. And then from 3 to 6 a.m., when the sun comes up, that would be called morning. Now, if you take the time men you are living in, here's the Lord. The Lord died on the cross. He went back to heaven, say right here. He gives us 2,000 years, let's say from that bench there to this, this um, table right here. And you call that time night time. The sun is gone, the moon is out, and all the light like this world sees for 2,000 years is that moon, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It, if you divide that up into four watches, you've got from the time Jesus died on the cross, uh, AD, AD 33, long in there, from here to the first 500 years, that would be evening. From 500 A.D. to 1000, that would be midnight. That's what we call the Dark Ages if we study history. And from 1000 A.D. to 1500 A.D., the cock crowing. So the rooster should crow at 1500 A.D. That's when Martin Luther, the, the, uh, the morning star of the Reformation, went, and the Reformation began, and the church came out from underground, out from under the power of the Roman Catholic Church that had been kept underground all those hundreds of years, and the Reformation came out. They started putting out Bible, 1500. You know what happened in 1600, don't you? The greatest book that's ever been on this planet showed up. I got a copy of it laying right over there. Thank the Lord. It's that King James Bible. And then 1600, 1700, we're in that last 500 years here, or what's called morning. Now, if you started a night at 6, went 6 to 9, evening, 9 to 12, midnight, 12 to 3, cock crowing, rooster crow, and from 3 to 6, morning, you would find us right about right here. We are that close to morning. And you know what the Bible said we're supposed to do? Wake up. It is high time to awake out of sleep. Now, let's illustrate. How many of you have ever had to drive all night or sit up with somebody in the hospital? You've stayed up all night before. Raise your hand, please. All right, that's about all of us adults. We used to do it because we was crazy when I was a teenager. We'd get a basketball and bounce all over, all over Nebo over there just acting stupid. A uh, bunch of boys that said, so we'll see if we can stay up all night. And, uh, you know, and these teenagers, like at camp, it's fun at 11 o'clock. It's fun at 12 o'clock. It's really fun from 12 to 1 and from 1 to 2. And then about 2 o'clock, you start winding down a little bit, don't you? And boy, you start uh, winding down, and you know, and you know, I've drove them many a time. I drove from Florida one night down in Pensacola, and I drove, and, and, and you know, I, I had these boys with me, 
And they said, now, Danny, we're going to go with you and help you drive home. I, I learned better than that a long time ago. That, Sorry, boys, they ain't going to do nothing. I, they'll, they'll drive when everybody else is awake. You know, when I, you know who'd wind up doing all the hard driving? I did. I, got, I was scared to let them drive. They were going, I was afraid they'd kill us. And uh, we, we was coming down through the mountains one time, had a big load of stuff, and uh, yeah, we'd been up. We drove all the way out to Missouri, got a load of church pews like this, and started coming back. We'd been up all day, all night, and come back the next day. And next day, and we're just barely like an hour of sleep. And uh, and I'm telling you, I couldn't. We had about six of us in a van, and we took turns, and we took turns. And I was scared to let them drive. I said, I'm them boys. They're not. They're not too smart. They'll kill us. I know they will. They'll sit there and go to sleep. And I drove just as long as I could. My eyes was burning. Finally, I let this nut drive. And he got over there. And, and I don't know if you've ever done this or not, but I got in the side of that van and laid down. And I was so sleepy that I'd be in and out. I feel every bump. Now, I envy you people that can sleep when you're riding in a car. I envy anybody like that. I know people just say, well, wake me up. We'll get tired and just pile up on a pillow. And, I mean, they're gone. I Listen, I feel every curve. I feel the RPMs go up. I feel, you all right? You all right? You all right? Finally, just pull over and let me drive. You, know, you finally get like that. And usually it's one or the other that don't trust the other. And uh, But I'm telling you, I started that night. I got down there, and I remember I was thinking, well, I don't care if we do <laughs> I'm going to sleep, bless God. Have you ever got that battle? You probably just don't care. We wreck, we wreck. And uh, I'm going to sleep. And I laid down, and, and, uh, and we come down the mountain down from Iceville, down Interstate 40. And we stopped finally and got something to eat for breakfast. And uh, I said, man, I don't know how you did it. Tim, the last couple of hours is rough. And he said, yeah, I know, Brother Danny. He said, one time I thought I was back in the back of the van hanging up my clothes. I said, What? You crazy thing, you idiot! You're gonna kill us. He thought he was in the back of the van hanging his clothes up, driving down the interstate, tractor and trailer on one side, concrete wall on the other side. I'm telling you, I've done that a many times. That's a picture of the day that you and I are living in. It's night time. It's fun, boy, when you first start out. Man, isn't it a lot of fun? Boy, oh, hallelujah, praise God, we're going to live for Jesus. Woo! But it keeps getting darker and later and later and later and later. I asked this boy one time we went to Florida. He said, now, Danny, I'm going to help you drive. And I said, all right, here's how we'll do it. I'll drive two hours, you drive two hours. I'll drive two hours, you drive two hours. We was coming from West Palm Beach. And uh, so I was driving, I drove my two hours. I woke him up and said, all right, it's your turn to drive. And I said, now, you what? You all right? I'm telling you, you tell me, you all right? I'm putting my life in your hands, dude. Right, are you okay? He said, I'm fine. We well, stopped and got something to drink. And uh, that's, that's usually a mistake, too. But uh, he, he, he stopped and got something to drink. They didn't have monster drinks and five-hour energies and all that stuff like they got nowadays. You just drunk Pepsi after Pepsi after Pepsi after Pepsi. And you can only drink so much Pepsi. Uh, you'll be stopping at every ex enter, uh, exit, uh, having to go to the bathroom. And so I, I sat over there. He drove, I drove. He drove, I drove. Man, I'd drive and I'd look. And, you know, finally I said, it's your turn. And he accused me. He said, you ain't drove no two hours. I said, I have two. Look at that. He said, you moved the clock. I said, you know, I never thought of that, but that would have been a good trick right there. Uh, but uh, I heard my two hours up, drove about ten miles down the road. But I'm telling you, people, uh, you know, it's like this. Somebody has to stay awake and drive. And you can ask my wife sitting over there how many times I've said that about our church. And the days that we're living in and the darkness that's descending on our country, this icy thing, this racial war, these, the, 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 the wickedness that's come on, it's late, people. It's late. It's just about daylight. It's almost morning. And we can't quit. You can't give up. It's no time to sleep. Somebody got to stay awake and drive. I reckon it'll be me. I usually have to. I'm telling you, God, I don't trust y'all. You'll wreck and kill us. Right, so somebody has to stay awake and drive or the, plant, or the thing wrecks. So I'm going to talk about that. Let me give you some scriptures about what I just said. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. Ephesians 5, 14. 
Awake, thou that sleepest, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Proverbs 6 and verse 9. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Proverbs 10 and verse 5. He that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Proverbs 20 and verse 13. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. You know what that means? If you lay in the bed all the time, you ain't going to have nothing. Get up and go to work. That's what that means. You want an interpretation? Proverbs 23 and verse 21. Drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. That means if you're lazy, you'll never have nothing. You've got to get up. Drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Mark 13, 35 and 36. Watch ye therefore, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And the picture of most churches tonight is a big old pretty church out here on the hillside and a steeple going up like that and a bunch of Z's going out the top of it. Everybody's sitting there like this. Sound to sleep. Never waking up. That's what revival is. It's waking up. It's sleep for a while. Say, Lord, I've been a sleep preacher. I need to wake up. I need to get right with God. Ladies and gentlemen, Samson is a perfect illustration. You know what Samson did? He went to sleep, buddy. And when he woke up, his power was gone. He took him out in the wrong barber shop. And he laid his head down on that woman's lap. And she tried him two or three times. She said, Sammy, I sure do love you. Tell me how come you're so strong. He should have knew right then not to trust her. But he said, I like that right there. She said, Wow. I thought you'd be bigger than that. Well, dynamite comes in little packages. And she said, Sammy, you are so strong. And he messed around with her, messed around with her, finally laid down and went to sleep, and he lost his power. Ladies and gentlemen, I heard about the, an Olympic swimmer. This guy was in the Olympics and training for it, and he trained and 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 trained, and the big day finally came, and he wanted to be right. He had eat right. He had exercised. He had trained. He had run. He had swam. He had swam, and he went to sleep to take a nap, and his clock didn't go off, and he missed big race. He slept through his hour of opportunity. And the church tonight is sleeping through the greatest opportunity to let our light shine for Jesus Christ the world's ever seen. There's never been a time as dark as the time we're living in. I had people ask me, do you think it's as bad now as it was in Sodom and Gomorrah? I sure do. I sure do. They didn't have internet. They didn't have screen pornography. They didn't have all the technology and stuff that that we have tonight. I'm telling you the greatest opportunity the church has ever had to preach Jesus Christ to the world is the year 2016 and it's just snoozing people. I mean asleep on God. I mean you know, the average church member comes in church like this on Sunday. Sleepwalking. Shall we gather at the river? I know him. I have believed it, whatever, and am persuaded. Thank you, Lord. I pray you bless us. And, Jesus, and leaves like that. It has no effect. Sound asleep. Now, I never have been a sleepwalker. Is anybody in here walking in your sleep? Raise your hand. Strange to admit it. Jojo, do you walk in your sleep? So if I see you out in my yard at night. I want to, Cody, do you walk in your sleep? Yeah. Didn't, uh, didn't uh, Wesley used to do that? Was it him? My nephew lives right down below us. Uh, he's walking sleeping. I never have done that. But I know some church members can do it. I know preachers, preachers don't talk in their sleep. They talk in other people's sleep. I mean, <laughs> I heard about one church. I heard about this church. I had to start serving coffee after church on Sunday morning to get everybody woke up enough to drive home. I'm telling you, the Bible said, Awake! Awake! Pray! Witness! Do something for God! Be a witness. Let your light shine, people. I mean, you got that nose book? Get on there and be a witness. Let your light shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you about four things right quick and we'll go. Number one. Number one, I'm going to describe nighttime quickly. At night, no one can see very far. At night, no one can see very far. Think of the great prophetic seers in days gone by. The great prophets of the Old Testament. How they could see. Amazing. 
all the prophecies that came on the Lord Jesus Christ the first time. Prophets. So, and then even in our own generation. I don't know if you'd call these guys prophets, but people like Clarence Larkin and uh, uh, C.I. Schofield and uh, men, men who knew the Bible and told us things. Uh, D.L. Moody and Sam Jones and Billy Sunday and Mordecai Ham and all that. You know what the Bible said? It said, where there is no vision, people perish. And somebody got to stay awake and drive, people. Somebody got to stay awake. And it's not easy. It's a dark day. There's no hope or direction. Wandering stars, what the Bible said. Foaming out their own shame. Listen, we are living in a time of darkness. I mean, it's meditation. It's Eastern mysticism. It's seeking for peace in drugs, sex, rock and roll, rap. Everybody's going everywhere looking for something and it's right in front of their face and can't see it. It's dark. It's dark. It's hard to stay awake right now. I go down the road and I used to stop. I used to stop and I'd buy. I'd buy pork skins, barbecue pork skins, and Doritos, and Fritos, and a candy bar, and the big gulp. Come big old, look like trash cans. Them big old, them Pepsi's that big nowadays. You seen them things? You can get them 99 cents at the QT. Uh, and some of them places like Sheets or something like that. And I'd stick that thing down there, and I'd go down the road, and I'd eat something salty and drink Pepsi. Eat something salty and drink Pepsi. And I'd do all right for about an hour. And then, you know, it'd be gone. I mean, you can only eat so much. And the reason you get them pork skins is because, you know, at 4 o'clock in the morning, you eat a whole bag of pork skins, your belly hurts so bad you can't go to sleep and you, and you don't have a wreck. That's right, you just give yourself a bellyache. I'm telling you, man, them things in there full of Pepsi and shaking inside there, all them old pork skin junk, Lord, mercy, it'd kill a dog. That battery acid's in, in your stomach. Uh, but it's better than wrecking and getting killed. I was coming one night, and I thought I, I thought I saw this real skinny hitchhiker. And I said, man, that's the skinniest guy i ever seen in my life. And I kept getting closer and closer, and it was a sign, just a sign that big. I went, oh, my goodness, that wasn't a person. I was hallucinating. I saw reflectors. I saw reflectors, and I thought it was a truck. I thought uh, there's a truck right beside me. I'm going to hit it. And it was like on the side of the road or something, reflectors. And you know, when you start getting like that, you better do something. You better do something. How many of you have ever done this? You finally get pull or stop at a stop sign and just put your head down like this just for a second. And bam, somebody blows a horn behind you. Go on, fool. Uh, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm telling you, sometimes it's hard to stay awake. Sometimes it's hard to stay awake, y'all. Sometimes it's hard to keep reading your Bible, keep praying, keep doing right. The devil will just, oh, Mr. Sandman, man, he'll put you right out. I went down the road, put music in, preaching in, and finally... Have you, I don't know if you've ever done this or not. I've had, done it several times. I don't advise it because it's a miracle of God I ain't got killed. Honest to goodness. I've listened to preaching, and I'd be listening like that, and I couldn't really understand what the preacher's saying because I was so sleepy. And then he quits. I thought, he quit preaching. And then he starts again. I went to sleep. He didn't quit preaching. I'm pulling off then. I'm saying, I'm, I've slapped myself in the face. Stuck my head out the sunroof. <laughs> have you ever done that? I, have you, how many's ever done that? Went down the road just beating yourself, and it, and it does all. It wakes you up for a minute, and as soon as you quit, there you go again. I'm telling you, it's tough, buddy. It's hard to stay up all night. Done it many a time. I've done it many a time. Yeah, I've done that. Sling your arms around. I tell you, I used to have people, it's off the subject, but I used to have people all the time, they'd say, now, Danny, you're going to get killed. Say, when you, you stop and get you a motel room, and I say, I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. I sissy, I ain't going to be a sissy and stop. I paid $60 for a motel room. It was, I finally, I did it. A time or two, and this is no joke, I paid for that motel room and go in there and lay down and can't go to sleep. I laid there and thought, I could be 40 miles down closer home right now. 
You idiot. You paid $60 for this room. And finally go out for about two hours and get up and go on. So what I do, I, I used to carry a little old pistol with me. I don't anymore, but I had it a time or two, and I had this little pistol, and I stopped at a rest, uh, truck stop because all these people had been getting killed up in Maryland and stuff. And I'd go to sleep, and I'd put it right there and put my hand on it like that and go to sleep in the car. So if somebody's going to kill me, they say, I ain't going to mess with him. Uh, he got a gun left. I don't recommend you do that. I, I've never carried a gun in my life. I ain't got one right now. But don't get no ideas and try nothing because we've got enough rednecks in here to take care of ourselves. Amen. That's right. I wouldn't advise it if you're a terrorist. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something this evening. Listen, at night you can't see very far. Secondly, at night, adulterers and thieves are busy. But at night's when the sin comes out. Now, you ever seen Las Vegas in the daytime? Well, it ain't nothing. Little old town sticking out there. Man, that thing at night, pow, them lights come on, and it really looks like something. That's sin comes out in the nighttime. Remember that old song we sing? Thank the Lord for the nighttime. For get the day. That's, shut up. Y'all don't remember that song, do you? Does anybody remember that song? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> me and Brother Wayne. You don't remember that, Brother Jason? Thank the Lord for night time. For get the day. Boom, 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 boom. Like that. And, and I used to always think about that song. And I thought, man, why would you thank the Lord for the night time and forget the day? You want to go out and sin? I mean, I mean, we ought to. Listen, you know the hardest time to stay awake? Right before that's when it first starts getting daylight, and you think, "Ugh, I've stayed up all night. I've been going into Florida, and the sun comes up. If you're going down 95, it comes up out of the water. If you're going down 75 on the other side of Florida, the the sun goes down in the water on the Gulf side. Personally, I like that better going down. But boy, I mean, you go down there, and there comes a, the sun starts coming. You say, "Ugh," you think, "I'd give." A hundred dollars right now if I could just stop and lay down and go sleep. That's how bad you want. And sometimes, listen to me, sometimes everything in you wants to just stop. Sometimes you don't want to get up and come to church. You don't want to serve But the Christian life is making yourself do what you don't want to do when it's the right thing to do. You're never going to be a good Christian until you make yourself do some things that your flesh don't really want to do. Where did this idea come from that all you're supposed to do is what you want to? You'll never, you won't be able to keep a job. You'll never be able to play a sport. You'll, if you have that attitude, you won't be worth shooting. Listen, sometimes I make myself. There's times I make myself go. There's times I make myself. I mean, there'll be a ball game I really want to see, but i got to preach. I make myself do what I'm supposed to. you got to stay awake. you got to stay awake. Somebody's got to stay awake. These are busy. Rock videos. Rap. Yes, you heard about our rap group we had at camp. They was wicked. They're here tonight, too. If you want me to, I'll get them up here and let them sing. I'm not going to reveal who they are. Three of them sitting right here in this building tonight in a rap group. Y'all want to hear it? <laughs> we don't have our soundtrack. We we'll, we'll might let you hear it next time. Anyway, number three, at night, all light on this earth is artificial. All light on this earth is artificial at nighttime, except for the moon and the stars. Now, I'm going to say something here. I can't prove all of it, but I believe it. You ever wondered how come there's so much, so much sin and wickedness in the big cities and you'll find God more out in the country? All them artificial lights in that city. Hey, remember when we was in New York City? You don't even see the moon. You never see the moon in New York City. I bet these people live in New York City all their life. They ain't never seen the moon. You, there's millions of lights Millions and millions of lights. But, but come down South Georgia sometime, or South Carolina, or even around here, flat, Fort's Flatter, and go out on a real clear night when there's a full moon. Man, you can drive your car by the light of that thing. You can, you can walk down the road. You can see light. That's when the moon's out. Uh, listen, the moon is out. In the, in the big city, you don't see the moon because all you see is artificial lights. In the big city, all you got is artificial junk. 
fake singer, fake churches. That lady from California stood up here the other day and she told about all the fake churches out in California, read the wrong Bible, preach the wrong sermons, believe the wrong stuff, all kind of weird. Did you see that up in New York, the video I showed last week, where this, uh, the Church of the Epiphany have, has opened up their doors to Muslims and Muslims are coming into the church by the hundreds, two and three days a week, getting down and pray, doing whatever they do, where they all do like this, you know, stay down there for a little while and then all of a sudden, they all go up at the same time. And that is a waste of time. I'm not, they're wasting their time, wasting their breath. The only prayer God hears is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what that is? Artificial light, buddy. That's artificial light. And I'm doing Buddhism, every other religion in the world. Jesus said, I am the way. Not a way. The way. The truth. That's not hate speech. That's Bible preaching. You need to learn the difference. Amen? All light on this earth is artificial at night. They'll either be snake handlers or sound asleep or a celebrity church. You, you can tell by the way they talk. This guy got on TV and he was talking about, well, uh, when did you come? He said, well, I lived a pretty evil life for a while. And, and No, he didn't say evil. That would be too strong. He said, uh, I was astray for years and then I came to faith. I came to faith. That's a strange way of saying, I mean, people used to say, I got saved. I got born again. I came to faith. They don't say lost. They say unsaved people. They don't say you'll go to hell. They say you'll be separated from God. You see what I'm saying? That's artificial. The Bible says hell. The Bible says you must be born again. The Bible said we're saved. Don't be ashamed of what the Bible says. You say, well, it don't fit in our generation. You mighty right it don't. And if it does, it's wrong. Last thing I'll say and I'm done. At night you get sleepier and sleepier because the sun is about to come up. You know what you better do? You better pace yourself. You better pace yourself. Now, we're getting ready to have Bible school, and we're talking about running a race, and I'm going to preach on running a race. And if you're a runner, if you're a long-distance runner, you've got to learn to pace yourself. If you're a, long, a long-distance runner, you don't just go like this. Go! You don't take off like that, because you won't last that night. You take off like this. And that's what you better do in your Christian life. You can't... You, you, you've got to pace yourself. We're going to be doing this a while if the Lord don't come. Are you listening? you got to pace yourself. The other day at camp, Carrie, the, I preached real hard that night, and my watch quit. I haven't done that in years. It used to do that a lot. A watch wouldn't run on my arm. Every time I'd preach real hard on I know that sounds weird, but it's the truth. I'd get a brand new watch, and it wouldn't run on me. I'd preach about all that demonic stuff. And uh, my watch quit, sure enough. I don't know if it's because I hit it. I don't know what happened to it, but it still won't work. And so Carrie, she said, here, Daddy. She put this little thing on me right here, and uh, it tells you everything you do, everywhere you go. It's weird, buddy. That's the next step to the mark of the beast. Right? It's coming under your skin next. That's the next step. It tells how many steps you've took. I'll just make sure it's on my left hand. <laughs> but anyway, they tracked me Tuesday. And was, wasn't it Tuesday. That day I was real busy, and I run around a lot at camp. It's from here to the good night. It's from here halfway out the road from our from my room to the cafeteria to the gym to the cafeteria to the church to the room to the wherever to the boys' dorms. To the, I mean, it's just. And I, I run that morning. I run two miles that morning, and then got ready for church. And I think I preached that morning, and then somebody else preached that night, and I run around all evening, and then played ball that night to about. 11 o'clock. That day, Tuesday, I took over 23,000 steps running, preaching, or playing basketball. 23,000, over 10 miles. I went over 10 miles on my feet this past Tuesday. I thought, good night. One woman sort of made me mad. I got me, she said, well, those bird legs. I, I, I want to say, I'm fine. How are you, Turkey. But I didn't. I was nice. Call me bird legs. 
but and and I ten miles. I went ten miles, brother, on my feet, and I burnt. I forgot how many calories. Five, four. She you, she's got it. It's on record on her phone. How how's that? That's weird, buddy. That is weird. Five four thousand calories. Tells your heart rate. Tell how many uh, steps I went up, like 70-something, like where you climb a step up like that. And you know what I got to thinking? I got to thinking, you know what, man? The Lord takes he keeping our steps numbered. He knows every step we take. He knows every step. You say, boy, it's amazing that thing counts your steps. It is. Think about when you get to heaven. The Lord knows every step you took on bus route, every time you give out a track, every time you witnessed, every time... And it's hard to stay awake right now. But I used, to, I used to drink, 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 drink. And then I finally figured out a good way. This is a good thing for you. Stop and buy you a big old thing of ice and chew that ice. Because that way you don't have to stop and go to the bathroom so much. Just chew ice. Crack, crack, crack. And, chew. and it helped me. It works for me. But I, it works good at anything I've found yet. But you know what that is in your Christian life? You make yourself stay awake. It's high time to awake out of sleep, people. We, there's no telling what we're going to see in our country this week before we come back next Sunday. You can't even keep up with it. Dallas, San Bernardino, Ferguson, Missouri, Minnesota, Baton Rouge. Yeah. Yep. If you didn't see the message last Sunday morning, go home and look it up. YouTube, Danny Castle, End Time, Seducing Spirits. They've been over 3,000 people watch it since last Sunday morning. And it's unbelievable what they're doing with those chips. It's nighttime. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head